Microphone check. One, two, three. Shattered cheese in the place to be. Silver price report coming at ya. Bringing you the daily price of real physical silver. We got to give a shout out to the new subscribers out there. We got Preston Lewis in the building hanging out. Thanks for hitting that subscribe button. All right, let's get into it for today. This is for July 20th, 2021, priced in US dollars. $39. Let me start that over. American Silver Eagle, $39.36. Canadian Maple Leaf, $33.87. Austrian Philharmonic, $31.74. Private Mint, $29.91. With an average price of $33.93. Premium, $8.92 over spot. So that premium just down slightly two cents. I mean, no real change to be honest with you. Now that average fell again. Fell about 31 cents. So we still got some tamping. All strong all in here. You can see that. That red line is the 20th. So still trending down, though it looks like there's a nice little jump up on that green line. That's that's as of this recording. So we'll see what happens um, as the day progresses. We also got a, a bounce back. Some of these miners here. This is a watch list over to the right. Now, yesterday I misspoke a little bit, made it seem as if I own uh, positions in all, in all of these companies, and I don't. I only have um, three miners in my portfolio and I actually accidentally uh, showed my account balance, which I did not mean to do, but, but, hey man, at least y'all know I got um, uh, uh, skin in the game. You know, I put I put my money where, where my mouth is, man. Uh, now the big news for today, Bitcoin hit under 30,000. You see that dip right there and it's bounced back a little bit. A lot of hoopla about that. Is it, well, I guess you can say it is crashing. Now, is it on its way to zero right now? You know, who knows? Now, I I think I've made it clear on here. I'm not a fan of any of these cryptos. I guess uh, I'm what they call a no-coiner. Um, so, will do I think Bitcoin is going to zero? Yes. Uh, when is that going to happen? Um, I think it won't survive a currency crisis. Uh, I've talked about this um, a lot before in the past, but as we saw with the events last year and the lockdowns, what happened? Uh, Bitcoin sold off. Physical gold and silver were bid up. If people actually viewed Bitcoin as the as a safe haven or uh, the future of money, then they would have piled into it when the market... Um, crashed last year but they didn't they sold it off which means people view it still as a speculative asset they're just trying to get rich off of it they're not actually using it to protect their wealth in fact i think bitcoin is largely a product of a speculative asset bubble that's been running for 10 years i mean the only reason that cryptos came out was to act as a way to route around um fiat itself and so when fiat collapses i mean what's the purpose of freaking bitcoin and i've gone over this before i don't think it can actually even if there wasn't fiat in the world um i don't think a digital money in and of itself um can replace commodities as a money and then the big reason why not only due to market sentiment um but in a currency crisis uh, the International Division of Labor is going to break down and all the complex systems which are attached to the International Division of Labor will break down, which means the energy grid, oil and all that. I mean, we're, and we got oil here in the United States, but, you know, when you're getting freaking, you know, oil from the Middle East sent to Timbuktu to be refined and then come here in the form of gasoline, that whole thing when the International Division of Labor breaks down, that whole supply chain breaks down and you're not able to get um, any energy and as we've seen in all of these currency crises that have happened venezuela what's going on in lebanon 
um, you get rolling, they call rolling blackouts or brownouts or planned um, power outages. So, you, I mean, <laughs> you know, if you have like a, a planned power outage of the government's like, well, we're not going to be running electricity between the hours of 7 a.m. and 3 p.m. Well, then you can't use your freaking crypto, can you? You can't use any kind of digital money. So I don't see how it's going to be viable in that type of environment. Not only that, um, and I've talked about this before, you have essentially three layers of the types of, of, of ways to get your resources. You've got isolated production of the household. You've got barter. Then you've got money. When the monetary, monetary system breaks down, you go back to barter. And since um, Bitcoin has no non-monetary use, it can only be used in exchange. It is essentially a poker chip in a barter economy into which you will go to. Um, I don't see Bitcoin having a value. Why will silver have a value? Well, because it, it, it's all, it has a non-monetary use. It, it's used in industry. In fact, um, its value today is largely industrial. So if there is an industry somewhere which you have access to, then there's going to be a demand uh, for your silver. Now, gold in that environment... I'm not going to make no comment on that. Um, that's actually, it's why I don't own, I do have some gold, but I don't have a lot, um, is because in a currency crisis, food becomes a number one priority. And then you go back to at least in some way, shape or form, a barter economy, which need, which means you need items that people have immediate needs for. And, and, uh, gold largely is used in, um, mostly for jewelry now I've heard uh, yeah I'm not, I'm not gonna make I'm not gonna make a comment on the I was gonna talk about the origins of gold and where it came from but I, I'd have to do some uh, go back and do some fact checking if I want to make a comment so I'm gonna let me uh, you know bite my tongue and not say nothing stupid now let me move on here briefly to just some little cultural observations here we got Jeff Bezos blasting off into space now, a lot of people are getting on him for using his money to go to, to space and build a rocket and do all this, and he's not using it to end world hunger and fight crime. Really, they're just using him blasting off into space as an example uh, or to complain about wealth inequality. First and foremost, the number one driver of wealth and economy in the, any society is inflation, is money printing, is fractional reserve banking, is central banking. Through Cantillon effects, if the government prints money, gives it to you to go out and buy beer, you get to, you get the beer first before the prices rise. That's what happens uh, when the government government prints money, gives it to let's say some contractor to build a road. The contractor gets that money first, gets all the resources first, then the wealth trickles on down uh, to the workers. But the workers since the resources have already been bid up, are going to have to pay uh, higher prices. So they actually, you know, they don't benefit from the Cantillon effect. The Cantillon effect basically describes money has, money is non-neutral. It has different effects uh, at different places in the economy, depending on how much and how much is printed and where it gets injected into. The second observation I want to make is Somebody has to push the limits, bro. If you want to, you know, especially if for you like climate alarmist people, you know, if you, if you, if y'all want to get off this planet and survive and live as a, a species on, on a planet with finite resources, you need people like Jeff Bezos with wealth to take risk and to push us further, to push the, the, the limits of exploration further. And, and for people like me, I don't want NASA, NASA just controlling who get who doesn't doesn't go to space. I want to see privatized space industry with people being able to go out into space when they want and eventually building their own freaking space stations. Secondly, or thirdly, I should say, if you own a thousand dollar cell phone and some Jordans and all this stuff, don't talk to me about spending your money to feed kids and shit. Jeff Bezos didn't have to blast off in a rocket. You don't need no damn Jordans. You don't need a $1,000 uh, 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 iPhone. You can walk around and pay less. Some cross trekkers. That's the pay less brand. That's what I had when I was in high school. And you can walk around with a flip phone. 
You can get a track phone. So don't sit here because a lot of y'all, what undergirds this is really just a bunch of haters. Y'all mad because somebody has more than you. Because a lot of y'all cats that's complaining out here, y'all sit around, y'all listen to Cardi B, you listen to Migos, you listen to Jay-Z, what do they talk about? Having money. So obviously, you're living vicariously through these people. So you just mad that somebody has some shit that you want and you ain't you don't know what to do about it. Because see, I sit around not complaining about the Fed, but at least I do something about it. And y'all cats out here, y'all doing something about it too. I try to invest my money. I try to figure it out. A lot of y'all cats, y'all sitting around watching Netflix. Y'all playing video games all day. But then y'all mad because somebody else out here getting it? You should be getting it. Like Too Short said, you should be getting it. Getting while the getting is good. And if you ain't doing nothing to try and figure out how to improve your situation, don't sit here and complain about what somebody else is doing with their money. I don't care about this shit. I'm too busy trying to get my own shit. Because I'm going to tell y'all something. I'm bottom of the rung, man. Only people below me in society are homeless people. I'm dead serious because of the job that I do. Not only at my company, in my view, that's bottom of the rung, but in society as a whole, because of the type of blue-collar job that I got, I'm at the bottom of the rung. But I'm going to tell you this. I ain't got no punk-ass mentality. And, and you know what? I might complain a lot about the Fed and all this and doing this, but... The Fed only makes people poorer than they otherwise would be. I'm poorer than I otherwise would be due to inflation. But even if there wasn't no inflation, due to the decisions and things that I did, uh, that I made in my past and the way that I was spending my money, I'd still be in the same place. Just a little bit better off. You know, you see what I'm saying? It's, it's a mentality thing, bro. So just, I'm, I'm just not with, I'm not with the, it's a lot of punk assness around me right now. And, and, uh, and I'm speaking to people I know personally. And especially when I see people I know personally that uh, had kids without being married. Had kids before they was ready. Uh, y'all going out partying, drinking beer, doing all this all the time. You ain't saving your money. You watch Netflix all day. You ain't reading the Wall Street Journal. You ain't reading no econ books. You know, I, I don't have a TV. I got rid of my TV about 2008, 2009. You know, this econ stuff, this is what I do for fun. And something, I mean, I'm going to, give me one. You know what? I'm going to make a point. Give me one second. Give me one second. I'm going to be right back. Hold up. All right, check this out. My bad, y'all. This let me let me show y'all this. This book right here. This is Human Action by Ludwig von Mises. Let's show you this mic is on. This is uh, Human Action by Ludwig von Mises. This mug right here. How many pages is this thing? Damn near nine hundred pages. I read this mug. Actually, I enjoyed it. But I watch a lot of. Why did I bring that up? That's a long ass boring book. I watch these Fed meetings. Long ass boring meetings. Lectures. Long ass boring lectures. Some of that stuff I don't enjoy doing, but I do it because that's what I have to do in order to learn how to manage my money. Y'all got it. Y'all can't just sit around watching Netflix and video games all day, not doing nothing to get it, and then complain because somebody else got some more than you. This is, I read this damn book uh, on my lunch breaks at work because that's what I got to do. You got to do what you got to do, bro. You can't be sitting here, Mac, uh, uh, Oh, the football team ain't, the football team didn't, didn't, didn't put me on the team. Well, your punk ass ain't even working out running drills. It's a lot of punk assness I'm seeing from a, and, and honestly, what pissed me off is from a lot of dudes. And I don't know why I've, I've been more observant of this kind of attitude. And I'm talking about dudes that's on my level socially. We're complaining about this, that. What the hell is you doing about it then, man? You, you sitting here blaming other... Oh, Jeff Bezos did this, Jeff Bezos did that. But like I just said, while you run around listening to Jay-Z talking about having money, psh, get a clue, bro. Get a clue. I, this is why my social circle is, is small. Because I can't deal with a lot of these cats, man. And again, I'm not, I'm not a perfect human being. But damn it, I can say I at least try. What is y'all doing? Y'all ain't even trying. Y'all just sitting here... Oh, uh, uh, bro... Hop on the damn Google and type in how to invest. 
Boom. That's step number one. But no, you on Netflix typing in Tiger King. Motherfuckers know more about Tiger King and shit than y'all know about your own damn money. And then y'all wonder why y'all broke. Y'all got to change y'all mentality, man. Number one problem is bad ideas lead to bad outcomes, man. Y'all y'all own worst enemy. And I'm not saying there ain't no such thing as injustice in the world. Because like I said, I complain about the Federal Reserve all the time. But you got to run through the checklist. Who are you oppressed by? You either oppressed by society, you know, society, other people. You oppressed, oppressed by the environment. So like, you know what I'm saying? Uh, people born with a a disability has been impressed by nature or the environment or you're oppressing yourself you're getting in your own damn way and nine times out of ten number three getting in your own way is the biggest one that's what i've observed come on man all right that's my rant for today bro get a bit look man and actually let me say something else too about and what i'm just saying here ties into this too to people complain about this spot price and shit. If you know what, what you investing in the silver for, there's no need to freaking complain. Now, I get down and out sometimes too. I know I have. But at the end of the day, like I always say, I sit back. I look at the big picture. If nothing has changed, then I stay the course. And because I saw people complain about, you know, the analyst said this, the analyst said that. Well, why don't you come up with your own damn opinion? I don't give a damn what these analysts said. I got my own damn outlook. Now, I listen to these cats. I take in um, what they're saying. Some stuff I reject. Some stuff I incorporate into my own analysis. This is why at the end of the video, I say, hopefully you found this helpful. Hopefully you incorporated this into your own analysis. Know what y'all getting into this stuff for. Then nobody can knock you off, a, off your square. If you know why you invest in the silver or anything else, this little type of shit, it don't mean nothing to me. I'm thinking big picture. I don't care. Like, I, this, this is a blue light special. Y'all remember Kmart? This is a Kmart blue light special to me. You know the problem I have? I don't know what the hell I want to buy. I got to shore up on some cash for emergencies. That, that's that's in the, So I got to take some of the, the money I would invest and I got to put it aside for that. And I, I either want to add a new position, a new mining position, um, or I'm going to get some physical. I haven't really made up my mind yet. I'm going to probably just decide when I get paid on Friday. That's the problem I'm having. But I'm not sitting here doubting like, oh, is the squeeze over? Because like I said, I was investing before Silver Squeeze. I'll be investing after it. Why? Because I know why I'm in this market. And I um exp- saw what happened with precious metals during the crisis last year. So I really, you ain't knocking me off my square. I don't give a shit about none of this. You ain't knocking me off my square, bro. I don't care what none of Jeff Christian, I don't care what he says. I don't care what all these other people say whatever bro because i know why i'm in here knowledge is power <laughs> as they say so man well that's my rant for today bro anyway stop counting other people's change man be about your change bro when you got stuff going on in your own life other you, you stop having to live vicariously through other people man all right well i dragged this out <laughs> longer than what it needs to go Thanks for the therapy session today. (laughs) All right. Well, hopefully you found this helpful. Hopefully you incorporated this into your own analysis. (laughs) Until tomorrow, man. Peace out.